Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery, and this is actually like the side room to my wormery. This isn't where I do my everyday vermicomposting. This is where I'll usually set up my time lapses. And as you can see, I've already got this camera running. It just snapped off a 30 second exposure. And probably in a couple more seconds, it'll be done taking that shot. And it's because of that 30 second exposure that we're able to get a pretty well exposed image even though what's being photographed is what's over there in the in the relative darkness so these little um, Christmas lights are providing just enough illumination for a nice long 30 second exposure and at the same time hopefully not creating such intense light that it's going to scare the worms away so but there's no worms in here yet the whole idea behind what I'm doing here now is to go get some recruits and launch off this time lapse. So I'm gonna head over to the wormery and put on a glove and we're gonna go fetch ourselves some worms. Oh yeah, before I forget, today we're celebrating this channel's four year vermiversary. So break out the bubbly, it's party time. Four years and running. And it wouldn't be anything if it wasn't for all you guys. Thanks everyone for all your support. The worms that we're gonna be using for this are coming out of this tray over here. This tray tomorrow is going to reach 182 days, that's 26 weeks of age, half a year. And even though it's probably all ready to go immediately, I just figured I'd wait for that nice round number, wait until this system reaches six months of age so that we can do the migration of the worms out of the finished compost. The worms are going to be relocated into this wormy bag tote that's down here. And it's going to be really easy, I think, to round up the worms out of this system because for 14 days now we've been running only one edge of the bin with food and with moisture and bedding, trying to lure the worms out. And a week ago when we last checked in here, it looked like even though it had only been going for a week, it seemed like the majority of the worms had already moved out of the system. So I think it's going to be pretty easy to recruit worms today for this project. We're going to get, we're going to get that tray up over here on the bench so we can get to work on it and round up some worms. It almost seemed a week ago when we came in here just to check on it and to actually add even more food to keep the migration of the worms cooking. It almost seemed then too that the finished castings on this side of the bin had already been for the most part depopulated. But we just reloaded the food and let the process continue. And at this point I would have to think that if there's still worms left in the finished compost there's got to be very few of them. So I wasn't looking to bring too many worms out of here over into the time-lapse bin. The time-lapse bin is a very small system. Not a lot of space in there, so I don't want to overload it. I've got these little plastic cups, and I'm going to fill up two of them. And that's what we're going to bring over into the other system. So it's just two little boxes like this full of worms. And it shouldn't take too long to round them up since they're, for the most part, going to be piled up into this section of the bin right here. And today, since this is all about setting up the time lapse and not so much spending time here with this population of worms, we're not going to goof around too much in the process. We're just going to get this job done, get the worms out of here, and even when it comes time to launch them, I'm not going to be doing that on camera either. I don't want to potentially disturb the scene over there in the darkness. So this video is really just about doing the recruiting process, but the launch of the worms, I'm going to kind of do that off camera, do it quickly, and in a such a way that I don't potentially interfere with the in-progress time-lapse filling over there. So let's see, how do we scoop out some worms from here? I was even thinking maybe putting them in a separate tray and then sort of picking through them a little bit to make it easier to separate them from the material that they're inhabiting and then leave most of that material here. That's all I really want to bring over is worms. This little plastic tray should work pretty well. I'm just going to grab a few piles of stuff that appear to be pretty densely populated with worms. Let's see if we can gradually just pick out some of the larger chunks of stuff out of here. There's just wads of bedding basically. So pulling the majority of the bedding out of here shouldn't be too tough to do. 
then we'll be left with a good number of worms. Perhaps what I can do even is um, just let this sit for a minute or two, let the worms actually dive down, and then I could skim off some stuff off the top that's already kind of been um, voluntarily depopulated. Let's give them a moment or two to do just that, and then we'll skim off some more of the stuff that we'll leave behind. I'm hoping that I'm succeeding in this attempt at making the worms burrow downward. I do keep picking away stuff and here and there I'm bringing a worm with me so I'm not being overly precise. But my hope is that what we're left with in here is a pretty good concentration of worms at the bottom of the pile. I believe I'm going to be treating this as more or less a blue worm time lapse since I do consider blue worms as being the predominant breed of worm that occupy this container. I know that it's um, a mix. I know that there's also red wigglers and European night crawlers in here too. But I always get this sense that the blue worms seem to be the, the more dominant worm in this system as far as um, their numbers are concerned. It does seem that they burrow out of view pretty quickly. So there's not a lot of waiting around, luckily. I do look forward to getting these worms launched off into their new home. I am fairly certain that the material that they used to occupy on this side of the tray has, for the most part, been depopulated. We came in here last week. We added some more food bits down into this feeding area and we did look around a little bit within the old castings to see what we can see and we saw very little as far as worms go. I think we did bump into one or two but it did seem like for the most part they'd all made their way over into the feeding area into the collection area. I'll let these guys squirm just a little bit more see what else I could scoop off the top over here. Maybe we'll do another handful Maybe one or two more handfuls, and then I think we'll have enough to get this job started. Well, they certainly do work their way down out of view pretty quickly, these little guys. Some worms don't seem to react so quickly and um, as readily to bright lights overhead, so they dive almost instantly and try to get out of the bright lights. It does seem like we're kind of getting down to almost all worms here. There's a lot of stuff kind of surrounding them too, which looks like it's not even worms. It does almost seem like I'm picking up a ball of what is almost only worms here, making it easy enough to split out stuff that isn't. So I think we're almost to the point where we've got almost worms only in this little pile here. Let's um keep working our way across here to see if we can get another handful of material that's rich in worms. Sometimes the corners are a good spot to find a bunch of worms. Let's see what we find over here. Ooh, that's weird. I could feel stuff squirming right there in my palm of my hand <laughs> as I was bringing that handful of stuff over. These things, these big, uh, I guess these are cardboard tubes, paper towel tubes or toilet paper tubes. Get them back down there where they were. What else do we have here? Just wads of bedding. I'm wondering if we can maybe do one other handful and then, um, then we'll probably have enough to get this time lapse off to a nice start with a good number of worms. And I've done kind of like four scoops across the entire 
width of the system. I don't know if there's going to be a spot where I haven't already recruited worms from. I just kind of skimmed my hand along the bottom there and I felt what seemed like a nice little patch of worms hanging out so I just grabbed it. It did seem like it was a pretty good dense chunk of material. Densely populated with worms I mean. I guess some of this stuff over here has probably been cleared out pretty quickly. Let's skim some of that off. Yeah, we're definitely getting there. At this point, I think we can just probably remove a few more handfuls of this surrounding cardboard and castings. And then we'll have just what we need to get this time lapse off to a good start. So like I said, once we're done collecting here, this will that'll be the end of the video, and then I'll take care of releasing these little guys um, without you know any sort of camera running or video being filmed of it. Uh, some, at some point in the near future, you'll have a chance to see them released into their new space. But that'll be available once the time lapse is ready. So I don't know, I don't know how long it'll take. It's, um, it's sometimes a month, it's sometimes a couple months, sometimes a few months. Depends on what's going on in the bin. This bin isn't really trying to test anything, or it's not really, really trying to see anything in particular. I guess the only thing notable about it is that it's um, using a type of worm that I've never used in time lapses before, which is these blue worms. And it's also um, built using a good amount of um, material that I've never used in any of my time lapses, which is my pre-made bedding material. So when I built the bin, I used mainly that pre-built bedding material. It's been sitting and soaking and all the different materials sort of melding together and getting nice and primed for worm usage, worm bedding. Um, but I did also use some not aged stuff. Just threw some leaves in there, little layers in between the aged stuff. So I'll be curious to see how the worms maybe occupy the, the aged bedding and maybe steer clear of the fresh stuff, at least for a little while, until that sort of breaks in a little bit too. So, it is kind of nice how they, these little guys sort of clear right out of the material. It probably wouldn't matter too much if we brought a little bit of stuff over with these little guys. But it would be kind of nice if we can bring over mainly just worms. It certainly does seem like we've got ourselves a good number of worms over here. My guess is that it's probably enough to fill up a couple of these already. It doesn't even need to be filled. I just want approximately two of these little cups worth of worms. And I think we're getting pretty close to that here. Alright, let's see if these worms kind of squirm inboard of this little mound that I made, and then we can skim stuff away. And then maybe we're going to be ready to put this bin back kind of the way we found it. Actually, you know, maybe we can actually kill some time over here while the worms are retreating into the mound to bring some order back into this feeding area here. So tomorrow my aim is just to haul this entire feeding area, bedding, leftover food, and all the worms, everything, bring it right over into the new system where they're going to be released, into the Vermi bag tote. And then the, um, the finished castings, I'm going to let them sit around for a while too. I'll just cover them up and almost forget about them for maybe a month or two, and then we'll see if any cocoons left behind within that material have yielded any baby worms. And if they do, we'll reunite those babies with this population, get them caught up with the um, with the worms that are at, the, at that point going to be living in the vermibag tote, and then they can all be one happy family again. It almost seems like when the whole mound is sort of squirming and the worms aren't able to really push any more of the material that they're inhabiting off to the side, it seems like maybe there isn't a whole lot of it to be pushed to the side. So maybe we've actually succeeded in eliminating the majority of this stuff. Maybe I could put this right on top.
Yeah. Give this another minute or two, see what I can skim out of here, and then we're going to be done. Well, it looks like we should be able to just pretty easily scrape off some of this stuff from the edges. Should be, for the most part, worm free. just treat the rest as the as the batch of volunteers that we've recruited for this mission pretty clean for the most part just worms how did I do it before before I think I managed to just grab an entire handful and then maybe this stuff can be dumped out as not being worms but for the most part I think what remains is worms Sure, it seems that way to me. All right, let me get these little guys repositioned into their little plastic launch cups that I'm going to drop them into the um, into the time lapse container with. But you know what? Before we do that, let's put this thing away. Let's leave it the way we found it. I don't think there's a whole lot to be done here other than just cover it back up and let things continue. We'll be back in here again tomorrow to get the rest of these worms out of here. Get them situated in their new home. And then this will be a done deal. This bin will be a finished batch after six months. But then it'll kind of transform into being what I refer to as a cocoon nursery. And we'll see what kind of baby um, turnout we can get from the cocoons that are probably littering this finished material here. Why don't we just um, get another empty bus box over here and I don't know if this is too close for the camera. I think the uh, camera might need a minimum of 8 inches. Can't be too close to the subject matter. But I think maybe we can get a little bit of footage of us, you know, dumping these worms out of here into their little launch containers. Put maybe a, an even amount of worms into each. They're all kind of like gripping onto each other. <laughs> we have to left behind a whole bunch of castings over there. So we've got a good separated pile of pretty much worms only over here. Let's get the other little cup. And at this point, this is pretty much all castings. Perhaps we can just um, grab one or two more worms out of this stuff, return that to the bin, and we'll just try to equal out the number of worms in these two containers just by bringing a few over from here. These two containers don't need to be topped off full. But I figured have two relatively equal quantities dropped in side by side. So I think this is what we're going to go with here. I'm going to return this stuff to the other bin. I need to pull this off. <laughs> if I want to return the castings to the container that it belongs to. Keep bumping into the camera very unprofessional something you normally don't see me doing over here on my channel but you know what let's make sure we put it where we want the worms to be castings true should be on this side over here but there were some worms so i wanted to make sure that they stay over where they belong over in the feeding area so we've got what we came for we've got our volunteers like i said I'm going to be taking care of the launch of these little guys into their new space, into their time-lapse container. And, you know, I don't know. Let's play the little game of guess how many worms we have here. I don't know. It doesn't seem like that much, but I think it'll be enough to provide for a pretty good action within the time-lapse container. So, all right, everyone. That's it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Have a great day.
Thanks for watching.